the land. Now do you rest each moment in the crew? Sify are you in the blood of the land? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb, are your garments for less are they white as snow? Are you in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, when the bridegroom will your robes be pure and white in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for that man? Sure. Hallelujah! In the blood of the... Are you washed? Are you washed? In the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you in the blood? Come on, lay aside the garments that are... Oh, lay aside the garments that are stained with sin. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's a fountain flowing for the... Are you washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are the garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you in the blood of the Yes, I'm washed, yes, I'm washed, oh, in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb. Yes, my garments are spotless, yes, the white, as snow, yes, I'm washed, in the blood, oh, are you washed, are you washed? In the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the land, are your garments, are you washed in the blood of the land?
seats at this moment. Amen. How many believe the Holy Ghost is mine? Amen. You've got to tell the devil to get thee behind. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll sing a small song as we invite the deacons to come and pray for the tithes and offerings. Amen. We'll sing the song, Fill My Cup, Fill It Up and Make Me Whole. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Amen. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift did I
bread and let thine heart be merry, I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the, letter, in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people and set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and there, then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who were with, who were the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And it was written in the letters, uh, as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them. They proclaimed a fast and set, and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and set before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones, and he died. And they sent unto Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass. Then Jezebel heard that, uh, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. Verse 17, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise and go to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down to possess it. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. You may all be seated, saints. Praise the Lord. I would like to speak on a small subject uh, that, that I believe that in terms of its importance to us as believers is not a small subject. Amen. Especially in this season where we are in. I would like to speak on information manipulation. Information manipulation. Amen. We see three main characters in the portion of scripture that we read. We see Ahab, who is the king. We see his wife, Jezebel, and we see Naboth, who, uh, 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 who owns the vineyard, and we see Elijah, the prophet. And these all are existing at the same time, and they are all connected, amen, in this situation that we see in the scriptures. Because Ahab wanted the vineyard of Naboth, but he could not get it. Whether he offered money or whatever he offered, he could not get it. But the wife, the wife to Ahab said, don't you worry. You are now acting like you are not the king. I can fix this. In fact, she says, I will give you the vineyard of Naboth. Amen. But it was not an easy thing for her to just go and grab the vineyard of Naboth. She had to come up with a scheme. And the scheme was to create falsehoods. Huh? Send people with a false message and raise up witnesses to accuse Naboth for something that he has not done. But there were characters in that day, the sons of Belial, that were willing to testify that Naboth had blasphemed God and the king. Are we together? So there was a system in place of people who were willing to take part in this situation. The elders of the city. 
There were stooges who just got the instruction. This is what you are going to do. No questions asked. And remember, they said Naboth should be lifted up above the people. In other words, he's put in a prominent position where everyone can see him. So that when the prosecution is going on, everyone else can witness. Why? Because you need to convince the people. You need to convince the people. Otherwise, there will be an uprising. Because people have their vineyards, they have their properties. They don't want to think that you can just grab, the, grab that vineyard, grab their property, and you don't pay for it. Right? Or you f grab it by force. So there will be a riot if you don't follow a certain process. But the process is a sham. Right? The process is falsehoods. It's false information given to the people in order to deceive them so that they can believe what is being put before them. Amen. And so this is something that I believe we live right in that day. Because we can take this situation of First Kings chapter 21 and we can match it with Revelation chapter 13. If we can go to Revelation chapter 13. We will start from verse 1. Probably skip some verses as I believe most of us are very familiar with this portion of scripture. Praise the Lord. Revelation 13 verse 1, the Bible reads, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast arise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. We all know if it is coming from the waters, Waters represents many people of languages, different tongues, and so forth. So this is coming from amongst the people. Are we together? And I'm sure we all know what that beast is. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Two characters, the beast. That comes out of the waters, but that operates by power that has been given to it by the dragon. Are we together? And then, if we go down to verse 11, a third character is introduced to the picture. And I beheld another beast. It's not the first beast. I beheld another beast. Right? coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. This beast is not coming out from the waters, but it is coming out of the earth, and has two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. In another portion of the message, Brother Branham says he saw the American buffalo, but he had not seen it before, so in his description... Uh, 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 he gives us that. So it appears like it's an innocent, amen, lamb, that beast. And he exercises all power of the first beast before him. So the second beast exercises the power of the first beast that comes before him. And we know that the first beast has power that it gets from the dragon. Amen. All right. And so we go ahead. And he exercised all power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. He maketh fire come down from heaven on earth. Intercontinental ballistic missiles. Amen. We're talking of serious firepower that is dropping down from the heavens. Amen. And he carries on and he says, And deceiveth them 
that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small, great, rich, and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had, that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And here is wisdom. Let him that is understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. And I know we all know many of us, these details, the characters involved. But I would like to, for you to see the similarities between this portion of scripture that we have read in Revelation chapter 13 and the portion of scripture that we have read in 1 Kings chapter 21. Because the second beast is connected to the first beast. And the first beast is connected to the dragon. So these beasts are carrying out the mandate of the dragon. There is a connection, right? So when you see the second beast acting, it's acting in connection to the first beast. Amen. And so when you see the second beast in action, it may not be acting on its own or for its own personal benefit, but it's acting on behalf of the first beast. Amen. And this is what we see happening in the book of First Kings chapter 21. We see Jezebel is using a system in order to bring about an accusation of Naboth. But the end benefit is going back to Naboth because he wants the vineyard. But everything that is coming is just an activity to bring about the fulfillment of the wish of the king who is Ahab. Amen. But Jezebel has a part there to play. Amen. So all the people that are in action are all acting as a result of the letters that were written by Jezebel. But Jezebel needed needed the authority of the king. So she wrote the letters in his name. But it was not the king who wrote the name. But she needed his stamp of approval on the letters so that they can have uh, 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 the legal standing to be implemented by the officers of the cities. And brothers and sisters, that's just how things work. Sometimes we see things happening and we wonder what exactly is happening but there's a huge conspiracy behind don't just look at things and see on the surface i'm sure there were people who were seated there and listening to the accusations of nebot and they were saying this court meets the requirement in the presence of two or more witnesses there's two witnesses and if you blaspheme god and the king you should die you should be stoned to death so this man has blasphemed God. There is witnesses. The man should be stoned. So I would like to believe there were people there who were deceived into stoning Naboth even though he was innocent. But it was because of the way it was played. Information manipulation is a way of looking at interpersonal communication. It deals with the way a sender might assemble information packages to a receiver in order to give an impression that is false from the perspective of the sender. It doesn't mean that the information being sent out is completely wrong. 
but it's packaged so that it can bring about an impression, a perception. There's deception in the way the information is presented to make people believe things that are not exactly the truth. In other words, the sender of this information chooses certain facts in the message from an available amount of information but omits, alters, or falsifies others so that they can deceive. And we are living in an information age. We are living in an information age. Plenty of information. Many of us, we have gadgets in our pockets or in our handbags that are sources of a lot of information. And that information is given by a source. And when the source gives that information, they have an intention. They have something, they are trying to give you an impression, a perception of the subject matter. Amen. So when somebody sits, when a journalist sits to write an article, they are doing it so that they can give the reader an impression, a perception of the subject. And when somebody makes a documentary, they may make it so that they can bring the truth, but they can also make it so that they can give you a perception. So they gather the information and they choose what to give you and what not to give you and twist some and falsify some so that it can be given so that whoever comes into contact with that information can be deceived into believing falsehoods. But this is not the first time this happens. It wasn't uh, Jezebel that falsified information that later led to the stoning of Naboth. It's been there since the book of Genesis. If you go to the book of Genesis chapter 3, if we can go to that scripture, the book of Genesis chapter 3, we start from verse 1. And I want to just say this uh, 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 right now, that I want you, I would like for you to have the context of what is happening around us as we approach this subject. Are we together? I, everything that is happening, international news, what's happening in this country, what we are dealing with, why we have masks on, and everything that is associated with it, I would like for us to have that as a context as we approach this subject. Amen. And in a few moments, we should be done. Amen. Genesis chapter 3, the Bible reads, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which, was, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Already, there is a manipulation of information. If it says the truth, we have been told that the day you partake of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, that day you shall surely die. And the serpent, who was more subtle than any beast of the field, in other words, he was very intelligent, very clever. Amen. He says, you shall surely not die. Alters the information and presents it back to Eve with an intention to deceive. And he says, because that day you partake of the fruit, that day you shall be as gods. 
But were they not gods already? <laughs> he was promising her something that they already were. But he presents it in such a way that to the human natural eye, it's so appealing. Because the Bible goes on to say, but when she saw that the fruit was good for food, the information was taken, repackaged, altered, and modified, and added to, and presented back in order to deceive. And was she deceived? Yes, she was. Promised exactly who she was. That's who she was. So the devil was not promising anything new. They were gods in the Garden of Eden. Amen. And God had told them, you shall surely die. But he added, you shall surely not die. One of the biggest lies that puts us in the situation that we are in today. Why we have all this sickness. Why we have all this pain and all these tears and everything else and the stress. Is because information was falsified and manipulated and presented back to Eve and caused her to be deceived. Brother Branham says the greatest robbery was done because there was just a change of the color of light bulbs. The greatest train robbery took place because the train stopped. So they didn't have to really do a lot of engineering and do a lot of things in order to stop the train. Where those lights are supposed to be green to say go, they, change, they just changed it to a different color, amber and then red to bring the train to a, to a stop. And they were able to have access to the train. And Brother Bram says the greatest train robbery was just because of switched lights. Are we together? In other words... One of the greatest robberies was wrong information given to the train operator. The train uses traffic lights to know whether to go or to stop. And if the traffic light is given correctly and at the correct time, everything is smooth. But when you, instead of giving a signal that is amber, uh, you give a signal that is green, you can cause an accident. Because then he's supposed to slow down, but he doesn't slow down. Instead of giving the red one, bring him to a stop, you give a green one. He's not going to stop. You can cause an accident. But at the same time, when you give a red light, instead of giving a green light, he's going to bring the train to a stop when he's supposed to go. And that's what the robbers did. They just played around with the color of the light. And one of the greatest robberies, was uh, uh, carried out as a result of just shifting a few things around. Very small manipulations of information can cause great deception. Like we see in the Garden of Eden, not a lot was changed. Huh? Not a lot was changed. It was just N-O-T. You shall surely not die. But just that alteration deceived Eve and led the whole world into this situation that we find ourselves in. We should know one thing, brothers and sisters. The devil is the father of lies. Huh? When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of himself. <laughs> in the same way that God is love, the devil is a liar. He is the very source of lies. When you hear a lie, you should know that that's a representation of the devil. Examples of information manipulation. Propaganda laundering. Propaganda does not necessarily mean people are being told the wrong things. There's just overemphasis on a certain subject because you want to give a certain impression on the people. Distraction by major events. In other words, 
People are supposed to be questioning certain, certain things, but there happens to be an earthquake. Then you leave to focus your attention on these things that arouse public anger, and you focus on the disaster. So you've distracted the people, or you bring them the World Cup, or the Olympics, or the AFL Grand Final, all the newspapers, all the pa last three, four pages of the newspaper is talking about one event. All the billboards in the city talking about one event. You take the minds of the people and focus them on something. It's still information manipulation. Because there is a reason why you are doing it. Or you manipulate by distraction. By a scapegoat. This is exactly what happened with Naboth. He became a scapegoat. Blamed. And then he took the focus of the people from the evil that was happening of his vineyard being possessed by the king. And they blamed him for blasphemy. These things, brothers and sisters, are happening right here, right now, in this world. And as believers, we need to be conscious of these things. We need to know that it's been there in the scripture. It's been there in the book of Genesis. It's been there in the book of Kings. You see it throughout the scriptures. How did Jacob obtain the blessing from the father? By false pretenses. By false pretenses. He knew that his father did not have sight. There was a form of blindness. So he presented himself in a way that he knew would convince the father that he was Esau. Huh? In other words, someone can look at a situation and look at the weaknesses and realize that if I present myself in this way, they will not be able to really see my intentions. And I can be able to obtain the blessing or obtain this thing by false pretenses. And once I've obtained it, they cannot take it away from me. So we see a lot of that in the scriptures. Let us go to the book of Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, we start from verse 11. This is after the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? And his burial. And his resurrection. So Mary Magdalene, they've gone to the sepulcher. They've realized that the Lord Jesus Christ is resurrected. And he's spoken to them. And they are rejoicing. And they are rushing to go and tell his disciples that he is risen. And whilst they are rushing to tell the disciples that he is risen... Information has also reached the high priests, the religious elders of the time, that, oh, he's resurrected. We get to Matthew 28, verse 11. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the watch came to the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. Whilst Mary Magdalene and them were running to go and tell the disciples that the Lord Jesus Christ is resurrected, those people that were guards by the sepulchre and had witnessed that the Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected, they ran into the city to go to report to their bosses. There was a connection between military power, political power, and religious power. Because it was soldiers that were guarding the sepulchre, but see to whom they report. They report to the chief priest, the religious leadership. So they were all intertwined in the crucifixion of Christ. Amen. And so they go and report and shoot unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large sums unto the soldiers. Bribery. It's not a new thing. It's there in the scriptures. Huh? 
They gave a large sum of money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away, away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So even the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ was fought by falsehoods. A spread of false information. And a lot of people believed the lie. Because whilst the disciples were getting told that he is resurrected, the rest of the people were getting informed that his disciples came by night and stole him away. And who was perpetuating this whole thing? Religious leaders in connection with military power and political power. Because they said to the soldiers, remember the soldiers were in trouble. Because how, did he, how, how come you slept? If you are saying you were sleeping when he was stolen away, why were you sleeping? So they were going to be in trouble, but see the assurance that's coming from the chief priests. Don't you worry. When this news reaches the governor, we will be on your side. We will protect you. We will make sure that nothing happens to you. We will secure you. <laughs> so religious leaders, political leaders, military leaders, were all operating interconnected, just like that. Yeah. Are we together? And who is getting deceived in all this? It's the majority of the people. The public. This is happening in secret. All these agreements are being signed in secret. Are we together? The soldiers and the chief priests are not discussing at the mall. They are discussing in secret. And all these things are being agreed in secret. But who is going to be deceived? The general public. So when the information gets to the general public, it's been manipulated in order to give them a certain perception that his disciples have come in the middle of the night whilst the tired soldiers that did a great job of crucifying him were sleeping. <laughs> Amen. So these soldiers could actually get medals for doing a great job. Unfortunately, they got too tired doing it. <laughs> but who is being deceived? It's the general public. The prophet says in the message Condemnation by Representation, paragraph 64, if you want to understand the day that we are living in, you look around. You look around. And don't be fooled by the things that you see on the surface. Brother Branham in the church ages, he says we are living in a complex world with complex problems. Not everything is black and white. You can run on the wrong side thinking you have the truth, but there is more to it. In either direction, you can think you have the truth, but there is more to it. Because these things are connived behind closed doors. By the time you see it on the news, it has gone through a process of editing and manipulation so that it can be given to you to give you a certain perception of the situation. The prophet says, two weeks, two or three weeks ago, I was crossing the western states and I was looking along as driving by myself, going to meet the Christian businessmen up in Idaho. And I was amazed as I watched the billboards, the advertisement. You can almost look around and see what's on people's mind and what's on their heart. I've often said, let me go into a person's house and let's see what kind of music they listen to. 
Let me see what kind of books they read and what kind of songs they sing, what kind of pictures they have in their house. I can just about tell you what the nature of that person is. See? It's because they, no matter what they testify, contrary, the fruits prove what it is. If you want to know what's prevailing, what's dominating in the minds of the people, just look around. Just listen. Look at the billboards. Look at the advertisement. Look at the news. Look at the newspaper. It will tell you what is dominating. What is in the people's hearts. Where the world is right now. You can see it by all the things. Amen. Even a tractor, you find a half-naked lady there advertising a tractor. Amen. There's all kinds of adverts that you wonder. How did... How can this thing be even put on a big billboard like this? I mean, who approves this kind of stuff? But the fact that cars, ministers and governors and policemen and generals and politicians can drive past a big billboard that is so immoral every day and not do anything about it tells you where we are. Oh. In the message oneness, Brother Branham talks about this deception that is so pervasive in this generation. We all know this story, many of us. He says, you remember the prophet says he was watching the news and in between there was an advert of a detergent, a dishwasher. And they were saying just a squirt in the water. You just put a plate in there a couple of minutes. You just lift that plate and put it there to dry. <laughs> Brother Brown says he was so impressed, he wrote the name down. And he said, I'm going to be a big hero in my house. Right? And he says, so I went and got a bottle of this such and such a stuff. And I squirted it all in water. All in water. Told her to continue sweeping in the house. This is Sister Mide. Don't worry, sister, I'm doing the dishes today. <laughs> you will see what happens. He's trusting the brand. What was said in the advert. I would fix it up for her. So I got the children's plate and raked out the crumbs and so forth and the egg sticking on it and dropped it down in the water and let it sit a few minutes. That one had said two minutes. Prophet, let it sit for a few minutes. And picked them out and set them up there. There was just as much <laughs> egg. <laughs> there was just as much egg on them as there was when I put in there. Yeah. See? And I would have lost. My wife would have lost confidence in me by that time. <laughs> nice. You see? Why does the nation, why does this nation let the people be deceived? That ought not to be allowed to be said like that. That ought to be against the law. But the modern cigarette advertisement, what a disgrace. Not a cough in a car load. In other words, you can smoke a whole carload. It won't even make you cough once. This is an advert. Right? So he's looking at things that he's seeing in billboards and advertisement. He says, this is deception. This is way back. When is this? 1962. Talk about 2022. The deception that's out there. Not a cough. In a car lot, all kind of, that ought not to be allowed. What is it doing? It's deceiving. There is death in every one of them. There is death in the drinking of whiskey. Rape, murder, insanity in the bottle. But yet, we are allowed to put it on our programs and advertise 
it as the kind that grandfather drank. More joy out of life. Certain kinds of beverages of beer and alcohol. What is it? It's deceiving. It's placing something before the public to kill themselves with. And we are allowed to do it. So, all these things that we are looking at, all these billboards, our, these cigarettes and all the alcohol and everything, is to deceive the people. The scientists knew many, many years ago that smoking cigarettes is not good and can lead to cancer. But for many years, that information was not there or provided to the public. So they withheld the information. Huh? It's still manipulation. Instead of providing it to the public, you withhold it. But there's billions of dollars involved in these businesses. They would rather deceive you and cause you to kill yourself than tell you the truth. It's not the only truth that is withheld from us. Many other truths are not told to the public. In the message, Watchmen, What of the Night, Brother Branham says, he's talking about people who work in the government and the secret service, and, you know, in those kinds of situations. And this brother says, and he said, Brother Branham, the public does not know what the secrets of the military things are. He said, when these great officers talked in the room, this is military people, huh? intelligence people, sitting down and having a meeting and discussing strategies and what's happening and what to do and where things are. He says, when they were like that, talking in a room, he said, there was such a horrible gloom over the room until one of their main scientists stood up and said, I wish I could take an old wagon and a cow and drive back behind the mountains and plant me a patch of cabbage and beans and forget all about it. Oh, he said, it would, if this information would get out to the public, the whole world would go into a panic. Danger is approaching. The prophet is talking about intelligence people, military people, politicians, scientists, sitting down, having a meeting and discussing. And he says, as they discuss these things, such a gloom of depression comes into the room. Even the people involved in these things get depressed by the magnitude of what's going on. Until one of the scientists says, you know what, I wish I could just quit all this and grow me a small patch of cabbages and beans and just live out there behind in the woods. Why? Because this is too involving. And that's why the information is kept from the public. Why? Brother Bram says, because it the information, if the information would get out to the public, the whole world would go into a panic. So when we say, I've been researching about this subject, brother, I know a lot. You have filtered the information. There's a lot that you don't have access to. And sometimes it's very disturbing when you talk to believers and everything is researched. You hear more about research than prayer. Huh? Someone wants to buy a house, I've been researching. But what about prayer first? Someone has a huge decision in their life. I've been researching. How about prayer first? Where have you been researching? On the internet. Do you know what's on the internet? Do you really know what's on the internet? Whoever, whatever website has an agenda. Every website has an agenda. If we open our website, we will have an agenda. Every news channel has an agenda. Has a position and a perception 
that it wants to give to the people. I come from a place where there were two major newspapers, the Herald and the Daily News. And you could tell who supports the ruling party and who supports the opposition by the newspapers that they read. If someone was reading the Herald, you know they are for the ruling party. If it's the Daily News, it's the opposition. And you can tell from the news, there will be never anything positive about the opposition in the Herald. And there will never be anything positive in the daily news about the government. Even if they open up a new major, major, major uh, 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 industry, they'll be like, yeah, why did they build that industry? They should have built a hospital. <laughs> the idea is just to criticize. So when we say we have researched, I, I, I do understand that. Unless you are an expert in that field, and you really know the ins and the out of that field, <laughs> your research can lead you astray. Because there's so much. We are living in an information age, rife with information manipulation. Huh? Even the prophet bought a bottle of dishwasher and thought, today I'm going to be a hero. Just by watching the advert. Brother, People are not paying millions of dollars for a 30-second advert during the Super Bowl for nothing. No one is paying $30 million for a small little 30-second advert for nothing. They know that those sec 30 seconds are enough to give a person a certain perception about our product. And if 30 seconds can do the damage, Tell me three hours on your phone or on your iPad or on your computer. Amen. And have you ever seen how so advanced the world is when it comes to information? And it's getting to a point, I've seen this, where if you talk about something, oh, we are thinking of going and buying this, we need to make time so that we can go to the shops and go and buy this. When you are looking on the news, the next advert that comes is exactly the thing that you are talking about. And you wonder, but how, how come it's like this? Oh, you visit a website and you want to buy a t-shirt or a cup. Huh? Then the next week you are going to receive adverts of cups. All the companies that are selling cups are going to be advertising to you. How did they obtain the information? We live in an information age. The height of civilization is when it gets to be an information age. It progresses from an agricultural to an industrial. Then it gets to an information. Because right by the time the destruction of Genesis chapter 6... The Bible says that thoughts of their imaginations were evil. Something had caused their imaginations to be just scheming evil all the time. Now we, we mess around with, 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 with the internet. Everybody, I mean, how many people look for their ugliest photo to put on social media? People are living perfect lives on social media. They have a lot of money, new clothes all the time. They don't even have a pimple on their face. <laughs> Everything is picture perfect. You can Photoshop yourself into Hawaii. You've never been there. But you can give an impression that you were lounging on the beach in Hawaii. <laughs> it's an age of deception everyone is putting pictures and their lives out there so that they can give a good impression of themselves nothing wrong with that but when we do it we have an agenda and if we do it and have an agenda everybody else has an agenda That's the honest truth. Now, I'm not saying, get me right. 
Take what I'm saying. Don't start to assume and attach meaning to, meaning to what I'm saying. Just take it the way I'm saying it. Right? So, but imagine every, all these individuals. I, I, I mean, some of us, I remember when people used to, you could store only 10 pictures. Only 10 pictures. You even had a limit of how many phone numbers you could store in a phone. Huh? And you had to have others that you write down in a book somewhere because the phones were so limited. Right now, people have 10,000 photos in their phones. Huh? We have so much information in our lives. How many videos do we have? One day I went to a mall and my wife was getting into that shop, that shop, you know, sometimes it gets difficult for us brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Pray for me, saints. <laughs> so, so I decided to go and, and, and sit on a bench. Yes. And I thought, well, I don't really have much to do. Let me try to start deleting all this. You know, some people just send you some ridiculous pictures and video clips and all that. Sometimes they are not ridiculous, but you, you don't really need to store them. So let me just create space. Use this time to delete all these things I don't need in my phone. Then I saw a small video clip. I said, I don't remember watching this video clip. And I clicked it. And that video clip had come from a believer. It had been sent to me by a believer. And it was just a few seconds before I stopped the video. But by that time, somebody's head had been chopped off. And by the time my wife came out and she's looking at me, she's like, what happened? Because my whole demeanor has changed. I, by then I'm shaking. I mean, you are literally seeing somebody's head being cut off. How do you share this stuff? But believers are doing it. And that, 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 that whole, sm for those seconds that I saw it, it shook me for days. But we live in an information age. I see a video. <laughs> Let me send it to Brother Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and for three days, I'm struggling with this problem. I have PTSD because of this thing that you sent. But it's the information. Information. We don't know what to do with it. And brother, whoever started that video and sent it out had an intention. And whoever you are sharing it with is going to also get the same thing that was intended for it to bring to you. All right. I will go ahead. In the same message, Watchmen, Watch of the Night, paragraph 87. I, I, I feel this is very, very important for us to have this level of awareness, right? I think in the day that we are living in, it's very important. There's never been a day like this. Never been a day like this. And so we need to know where we are standing and to know what weapons to use. Because you take the wrong weapons and try to deal with modern situations with modern ways, you are going to have a huge problem. Watchmen, what makes the paper say this? What makes signs afraid to move? What makes the Pentagon scared to put the information out? Because people would commit suicide and throw their money in the streets and things. Of course. When the truth really comes out about some of the values of some of these world currencies, they are not even worth the paper they are printed on. It's all deception. It's all falsehoods. That makes that dollar or that whatever currency it is be worth so much. When the real truth comes out, you will throw that money on the street because you realize it's worthless. Oh my. He says, the morning cometh. That is right. What is it all about? 
is the making of the morning coming. And it's pressing forward the light. It's making gross darkness come just before the light goes to shining. I'm glad to be a Christian. I'm so glad that I am his watchman. One of them that's standing on the wall, crying out, prepare to meet God for the hour of his coming is drawing nigh. It's a day of gross darkness. Why? People don't even know what reality is. What is reality? What is truth? Whose truth? <laughs> There's so much truth out there. And you know what causes the confusion? Does God change his mind? Paragraph 81. Now, we notice here that Moses had a king. And that king was God. That anointed him. And Balaam also was under a king, Balak. And it was more like a political setup. See, Balak and Balaam, a prophet of God, he went to Balak for his information. Moses went to God for information. There was the difference. What was the difference between Moses? And Balaam was their source of. Mm. What makes the difference between a true believer and just a formal nominal believer? It's because they hybrid the truth of God with the information they obtain somewhere. Paragraph 82. Right? They were both prophets. The prophet says they were both anointed. They were both believers. But the other one, his information came from the king, the political establishment. And the other one, their information came from God. Yet both of them were prophets. Because they were both called of God. Both met God. Both talked to God. And both spirit filled. Woo! <laughs> Are we talking about Balaam? Spirit filled? Met God? Anointed and called? Now, I'm coming home. See? Now, they were both spirit filled men. And that now that is true. The Bible said that. God met Balaam and talked with him. See? So we notice each one of these prophets, both of them being prophets, men of God, they catered their, to their headship. Moses catered to God and Balaam catered to Balak. Good brother, good sister, a believer, Outwardly, everything is okay. But where is your headship? Where is your source of information? Is it the news? Is it the newspaper? Is it the website? Is it God? When it comes to the most important things in your life, where do you get counsel from? Where do you get counsel from? From the newspaper clip? From the website? Or when it comes to the most important things in your life, then you've got to contact God and say, God help me, what decision should I make here? No, no, no one is questioning your faith. No one is questioning your faith. No one is questioning that you're a good brother or a good sister. Balaam was a good brother. Not just a brother, a prophet. And Brother Branham says a spirit-filled prophet who met and talked to God. <laughs> but his problem was where his headship was. It was linked to politics and the political establishment. Does that remind us of Isaiah in the message influence? 
His association with the king was an unholy association. He could not reach the height that he was supposed to reach as a believer and in his service to God as long as he was still under the influence of the king. We are not talking about an evil king. We are talking about a good, godly king. And yet, as long as Isaiah the prophet made the king his headship, he could not have direct connection to the headship, the true headship, which is God. But he could only get connected to the true headship when the headship, the earthly headship he had gotten for himself died. Because then in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. So we will never have the connection with the true headship of heaven that we are supposed to have until we die to the earthly headships that we seek for ourselves. Moses knew the news, the latest. But when it came to the most important things, no one could give him an answer except for God. Huh? Brother Branham knew the latest news. He listened to the news. He read the newspaper. He read Time magazine, Life magazine, uh, Reader's Digest. But he never based the most important decisions in his life or his approach to the gospel on the things that he read. When he got to a time of confusion, of not knowing what to do in his life, what is the truth, because everybody else was telling him his gift was evil spirits. He did not say, let me just go and spend a bit more time in the library and do research. He told his wife, I'm going to my cave. And God has to speak to me. Otherwise, I'm not returning. His answer was not coming from men. His answer was coming from God. And God can use men to give you an answer. But you will know it's the answer from God when you have prayed about it. And know it is not. It says, Now watch the spirit following it. There will come a time in the name of the Lord that people will go completely insane. The Bible says so. They will scream and holler great hideous things in their imaginary mind. They have an alternative reality. Huh? They don't know what's reality. Because their mind is clouded with so many images and so many voices. Huh? The radios and things, our television programs are doing it. Woo! <laughs> the things prophesied in the book of Revelation, all those creatures with the hair like women stinging and all those things, great hideous things, but in their imaginary minds. Oh, brother, all those Jurassic Park, and <laughs> those creatures, all those aliens, brother, and the species and everything else. People who start to see these things because there's so much bombardment of these things in our minds, it will start to confuse us. What's true? The prophet comes and tells us about unidentified flying objects. And he says those are God's judgment angels, investigating judgment angels. But it can be presented to you in such a way that you believe that there's people on Mars that are green in color. <laughs> huh? Now, who are you going to listen to? God's prophet or the scientist or the expert or the one who's crying. You know how they do it. You know, they will have all those, uh, 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 the wipes 
You know when people are giving their story and they and they are wiping so that they don't really rub away their makeup. It's just <laughs> stop the tear before it flows. It will wash away all the powder. So you close it in there. <laughs> oh brother. You said that they can give a very emotional picture. Oh, I'm so traumatized. <laughs> Who are you going to believe? <laughs> Who are you going to believe? Huh? All these images. People look so innocent. And yet they are lying through their teeth. <laughs> lying with tears and everything. If you are someone who is easily swayed, you are going to believe all kinds of things. In the message, God's power to transform. Paragraph 272. All right. If you can close that, brother. I want to read certain scriptures. If you can just close that. We'll get back to it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 1. The Bible reads, but of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night or darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. The darkness is because of the confusion, because of the information, misinformation, disinformation, and all kinds of information manipulation, causing confusion in the heads of the people. But we have been not been called to that confusion. We've not been called to confusion. We've not been called to groping in darkness. We are the children of the light. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for in helmet, the hope of salvation. For God had not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Let not your hearts be troubled. We live in a day of pandemics, wars, and the rumors of war. And when you make decisions based on panic, you are bound to make mistakes. Amen. Trust God. Amen. Pray for the answer. Amen. Whatever answer it is. And I hope my presentation this morning did not seem to take any side. But I preached the way I preached so that the church can know that their headship is God. Amen. It's all good. We have all this access. All this access. But the access that we need to be very thankful for is that in a sweet hour of prayer we can approach God. And God can speak to us. And we cannot walk in darkness, in confusion. Modern events are made clear by vindicated prophecy. Everyone else is in shock. Everyone else is surprised. Everyone else is wondering, then what's next? The bride is standing on the prophecy. 
We know what's happening. We know exactly why it's happening and where it's all leading to. So we are not we are not dismayed. We are not panicking. We are not running around like a chicken whose head has been cut off. We know exactly what we are doing. We know where we stand because the word of prophecy has been given in our generation. Who do you trust more? The news of God's prophet. Who do you trust more? The newspaper or the message? Who do you trust more? Your internet research or the voice of God in your heart? Who do you trust? Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. Verse 17. Amen. You heard the word sober. Huh? We read that word. We are not sleep. We are not asleep. But we are sober, sound, sane. <laughs> Amen. We are not panicking around and not knowing where to touch and what to do. No, 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 no. We know exactly where we are standing. We know when we see smoke screens. Huh? We know these letters, yes, it is the king's stamp, but Jezebel is involved. Huh? We know that, okay, if, if that part of the world makes a move, something is happening. Because the word of prophecy said, watch that part of the world. Amen. When we see world economies, we know what the prophecy is. That all these systems have got to collapse. And things have got to move to a gold standard. The prophecy has been given. When that will be, we don't know. But we know everything is working towards that. When we see unions and countries acting like they are friends, but we have never seen them as friends in the word of prophecy, we don't worry about it. <laughs> we have main characters we are watching because the public can be invited to come and witness the court case of Naboth and the whole thing is a conspiracy the whole thing is a sham there's nothing good coming out of it's all just acted out the conclusion is known already Naboth is going to be stoned to death not because he's guilty but because the king desires his Vineyard. Yeah, Second Timothy chapter three, verse twelve, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Ooh. <laughs> So even those that are deceiving others are also getting. And the scripture says these people who are seducers, who are deceivers, they will wax worse and worse. But continue thou in the things that thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Knowing of whom thou hast lent them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine. For reproof. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, uh, thoroughly finished unto all the good works. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If you could quickly give us that scripture, my brother. 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them. Who is the God of this world? This is Satan's Eden. The God of this world has blinded them. How is he blinding them? Information manipulation. 
deception, seduction. What happened in the Garden of Eden? She was seduced. She was deceived and beguiled. It was so in the beginning. It will be the same at the end time. For what is has been. But if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the gospel, glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Christ's sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's what the believer needs. The light of the glory of God in our hearts. Not all this other knowledge. It may be good, but this is perfect. This is perfect. To know what God thinks about a situation. Amen. Let's read our last quote. God's power to transform. 65. The prophet says, God transform us today by your power, by the renewing of our mind to turn from the meager elements of this world now. I love that expression. To have our minds huh, transform us today by your power, by the renewing of our mind to turn from the meager elements of this world now unto the word of God. And may we be renewed by the transforming power of God upon the seed that's in our heart that we believe unto creatures called sons and daughters of God. This is my prayer to you, Father, for the people, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. May you say that prayer for me. And may you say that prayer for the brother or the sister that's next to you. That God may renew our mind. That we may move from the meager, worldly, earthly things and have the mind of God the very mind of Christ, to know what to do in a situation, to know where to stand in a situation. I've said this in the past. I'll say it again and again. We are living in a very unique day. This is just the beginning. Many things are going to come. Be a believer. Don't be like the people of the world whose mood depends on the news bulletin. Huh? When they said news, everyone is sulking. When there's medals won, yeah! Good news, yeah! No, 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 no. We are believers. We stand on the word and we are connected to the throne. That's our headship. That's where our understanding of a situation comes from. Lead me to a rock that is higher than I. I don't know if we know that song. We could stand on our feet. When my heart is overwhelmed, Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. There's a song... If we don't really know that song, I didn't hear any enthusiastic reply on that one. So, I want us to sing higher ground. Is that where you want to stand? Not a place where doubts are rising. There's mind battles. <laughs> hey man, you don't know if you are male or female. It's confusion. I just had to throw that one in there.
diabolical falsehood. I'm pressing on Brother Your way, oh, to the wind. 